Hi guys, good morning. It is Wednesday the 13th uh, of November. We'll have a, a quick look over the markets and stories that have got us to where we're trading today. A quick review uh, of the week so far and, and look ahead for the rest of the session. And what promises on paper anyway to be uh, the best day of the week, I would have to say. And I'm really looking forward to it uh, in terms of how we're set up and, and also the data points that are coming out. And of course, Jerome Powell speaking later on uh, and Trump's uh, impeachment hearing all beginning uh, today powers a, a two-day event uh, of course yesterday in the markets quick summary uh, currency wise we saw the euro just drift lower which it's been doing yeah, in fairness for the last few sessions no major headlines coming through it's just been trending uh, to the downside the pound uh, pretty much the same we'll come on to a couple of stories uh, about uh, that which could affect the pound in coming times but as we know this is really going to be dominated by I guess over the next sort of five weeks uh, the polls or, or any developments on, on that front we do have some UK data at 9.30 so just as we're coming down to trade on this uh, this pivot and lower the day something to, to bear in mind there uh, S&P and equities in, in general start in the day uh, very positively pushing to new all-time highs hitting 3100 on the futures for the first time ever your witness in history here uh, only to drift down uh, into the close and with that drift down we also saw a push higher for gold and this could be significant or the start or something significant for gold as it's battling to get back above those key levels it had been breaking through uh, here you can see gold now trading on 1460 66 is, is quite an important level so it'd be one to watch for the, the remainder of the week. But here, just looking on this longer term chart, let's just put it onto a daily. Here, you can see those levels that we did break through. We're still underneath, sure, but uh, only just $5 now below that, looking perhaps like it wants to start to turn. But you wouldn't be too confident uh, in staying uh, short. Well, there's your line in the sand. If you're, if you're short, you'd be happy as long as it's below that. If you're long, um, or you're waiting to get long uh, above that level would be how to look at it. In summary of, of last night, because of course Trump was speaking, it was pretty much a non-event, I have to say. I mean, I came back from uh, the gym first time in in, uh, in three months, other than going to the sauna, uh, to to watch the, the back end of, of his speech. And the only thing of note I would say that he said was... Um, he said a deal could happen soon, but warned of tariff hikes without an agreement. Uh, so while this is nothing new and is, is kind of in line with what he's been saying, the S&P, of course, has just been on this massive FOMO push higher. And oh, let me just remove that down there. And it's kind of like without this overall confirmation yet uh, and the idea that he could still be hawkish with the... Uh, the tariffs about the agreement that maybe stocks just needed to to come down a touch and that is kind of what what happens uh, i was looking at the the s p um for an opportunity to to get short last night and we had this trend line that had broken let me just get this on from the upside you also had a previous low and it it did come uh, up towards that point uh, just sort of looking to, to get in on there. I didn't write it all the way down, but uh, you can see a decent push once uh, we got into seven o'clock and, and beyond, and that is at that time uh, that gold started pushing higher. So that correlation working okay, perhaps the market's uh, just sort of taking the no final agreement yet with a, a bit of an unwind. Of course, this market has just been on a, an incredible drive higher. You can see that longer term trend line here breaking uh, on the first of the month, and, and since then we're uh, had gone yesterday uh, to that high, 50 points higher from then. So uh, a decent push. Uh, we'll come on to a record uh, that has been broken in the S&P. Uh, first time this has happened since 2012. So we'll come on to that later. You're not just witnessing this history with the 3100, but also something, uh, something else. So headlines overnight. The main uh, Bloomberg title of the, the market wrap, stocks retreat as investors mold trade. Uh, I think that is fair enough, it's just trying to gauge what's happened so far in the week and what has been relatively quiet, uh, but this this day uh, for me is, is going to be, on paper anyway, uh, the, better, the better one. 
overnight headlines to to be aware of the the R uh, the Royal uh, Bank of New Zealand. Sorry, they're getting words mixed up. The RBNZ uh, keeping rates on hold, which was a bit of a shock to markets. So 16 of, of 21 Bloomberg uh, economists were expecting a cut. Um, the reasons. Uh, for the rate on on hold, there were signs of domestic economy will stop slowing and that inflation will pick up. So actually, the currency overnight and into this morning jumped pretty decent move here. Just gonna have a, a quick look over at the Kiwi. One percent uh, on that announcement, and it's uh, retained a lot of that push higher. Still only a tiny bit off those highs. Decent move uh, for following that. Um, couple of comments uh, we'll go through in a moment and they also said economic development since August where was the last uh, time they had a, a cut um, did not warrant um, a cut now but they will add further monetary stimulus if needed so kind of a, a wait and see approach much like the uh, the Fed and the RBA which have all this year cut three times and have all in their last meeting uh, put rates on hold. So a bit of a theme uh, coming there from those three central banks. Uh, the RBNZ starting things off in the uh, beginning of the year by cutting. Uh, they've all now cut three times and have all kept rates on hold. Of course, the RBA most recently uh, doing that last week before the RBNZ, uh, the 30th of October for the Fed. So a couple of comments from the uh, the RBN said we expect economic growth to remain subdued uh, over the remainder of the calendar year. Uh, still, domestic economic activity is expected to increase during 2020, supported by low interest rates, higher wage growth and increased government spending and investment. Uh, the low level of the OCR has flowed through the lower lending rates more generally, which support spending and investment. The interest rates will need to remain at low levels for a prolonged period to ensure inflation reaches um, the midpoint of our target range. Uh, we will continue to monitor, monitor economic developments and remain prepared to act as required. So are we now starting to see a theme across markets where we've done the, uh, the cuts and we're now looking to go more on a hold basis throughout next year? Uh, and then potentially look for, for cuts, uh, for hikes to come back in, uh, especially if uh, the trade deal is going to get agreed, uh, that could well be the case. Because of course, a lot of the, the times where the central banks were cutting rates, the main reason, or one of the main reasons they were always citing was the, the trade war situation and how that had uh, led to a global slowdown as well. So the rewind, reverse of that, the rewind of that, uh, and we're going to have to start looking to, to raise rates as global growth starts to pick up uh, again. Of course, yesterday, while trade comments on China was limited, we did have Trump attacking the Fed. This is nothing new, uh, of course, but a couple of his, his comments uh, worth keeping an eye on. How they are. We are actively competing with nations who openly cut interest rates, and now many actually are getting paid when they pay off their loan known as negative interest. Uh, Clarida did come out and say later on that Trump, he doesn't know if Trump actually does want negative interest rates and there's an article not long ago we went through uh, at the beginning of September where uh, Trump was, was talking about negative interest rates but how the US didn't really want it. So more hot air from, from Trump here but uh, some other comments. Give me some of that money. I want some of that money. Our Federal Reserve doesn't let us do it. Trump said, uh, which obviously drew a laughter from a crowd. Uh, it puts us in a competitive disadvantage to other countries. We're actually paying high interest rate, high interest. We should be paying by far the lowest interest. Uh, after noting the gains, of course, in the stock markets, which are, are up 25%, uh, or sorry, are up you know, massively uh, in his spell, he was saying they could have risen a further 25% if we had a Fed that worked with us. Uh, also an article just going on to talk about um, a Fed policy. Uh, there's uh, an interesting point here where George Bush um, was uh, who criticised the then Fed 
uh, chairman at the time, Alan Greenspan, for costing him re-election. So no wonder Trump is wanting to try and get the uh, the Fed on the side. And of course, we know that the, uh, the the equity markets are his baby. So if he was to get anywhere near that 25% push higher for next year, well, you can uh, pretty much say the he is a, a shoe in for uh, the, the re-election. And going forward, as we get into more mid part of next year where the polls start making more of a difference for the the election any chance that trump isn't going to to get that you know stocks have got to come down quite aggressively uh, you would say uh, so yes trump yesterday bit of a, a letdown in terms of market activity but having another go uh, against the the fed we do have powell speaking today um so worth keeping a watch on that four o'clock uk time uh, as he speaks in the in the morning in the US, of two days, um, likely to signal again that this week uh, that monetary policy is on hold, uh, but saying the belief as well that he may steer may steer clear uh, of action through 2020, which would be a historic anomaly. So I'll just go back to the top here. So we're really witnessing history today, or potentially, uh, shall we say. Uh, that would be uh, the f well, the first time that the re uh, rates of well their monetary policy has been sort of kept on hold. The Fed has changed policy in one direction or another in each of the last ten presidential polling years. So the Fed really not worried about changing rates either way during an election. You can see here going back to 1979 uh, through non-election years and election years. There's not really much difference. Uh, at all. So the Fed perhaps right now are not expected to change policy next year, or well, this is what Powell is perhaps going to suggest uh, today. Uh, during 2016, of course, they didn't do it before the election, they did it uh, after, uh, after that November uh, election uh, as well. So Powell likely to, to keep things uh, in line and, and say monetary policy is on hold. Any comments? Uh, digressing from that will will be of note. Uh, the S and P crate in history, not just by hitting 3,100, uh, but the 25th time that the equity benchmark avoided falling in consecutive sessions, the longest run since 2012, which is is quite remarkable. And it really, it is that whole idea of FOMO really taking over. Yesterday, we didn't get a confirmation at all, uh, and stocks hardly came down. You know, he also was hawkish on the idea that if there is no agreement, we're going to put the, the, the tariffs back on and stocks are, are still high uh, for now. So this FOMO, I think, is is the main reason we are dragging higher. You speak to, to everyone, it's, you know, surely it's got to come down at some point, but the, the buying the dip mentality is still there and these dips are getting smaller when they're getting bought into. Uh, in this case, over the last 25 days, any down day is then being bought up. The S&P 500 last fell more than 1% on October the 8th, so over a month. And then since then, there has been no daily loss, which has exceeded 0.4%. So that S&P 500 25-day run, you can see going back here, it has been a grinder, which we know is what stocks love. What's going to get us down there? Uh, well, Trump is starting to attack the Fed again. Uh, he's near a deal uh, with uh, the trade, um, so is he perhaps going to step up, step up that hawkish rhetoric, and you know this deal is not going to get done uh, to get the Fed on side ahead of next year? Because if trade talks progress, we get a, a first part of that deal, and that continues to look positive into next year. The Fed aren't going to cut rates elsewhere. Uh, other central banks aren't going to cut rates, so surely then equities do have to come under a bit of pressure. Uh, while obviously uh, you know I'm a, a long-term uh, equity bull, I uh, would be surprised to see this market just grind all the way to next election. I do believe there will be a bit of a, a correction, if you like, before this time next year being on those all-time highs. Uh, but for now, with FOMO taking over, stocks still, as you can see, pretty much bang on all-time highs. Uh, 3,100 uh, tested yesterday, unbelievably. Also, yes, uh, overnight headlines regarding Brexit. So what the papers are, are saying, probably the, the main point of note here uh, on Farage is that, uh, or the, the story on Farage, that he has been urged 
uh, to remove more seats uh, in the, the general election, take his chips off the table. So he's come under renewed pressure to give Boris Johnson a clear run in Labour, at Labour in, in key marginal seats. And this was something I, I was saying to, to Ant yesterday on the pound. And obviously we had this this decent push yesterday on the idea that Trump, oh, not Trump, on Farage is uh, unwinding 300 or so seats. And yes, fine, the pound absolutely should push higher off that. But it still, you know, brings in a bit of a worry that he is going to, you know, run seats in, in those Labour and Lib Dem areas where if he does win, you know, he's just going to hold those chips where it goes down the line and maybe Conservatives then need the Brexit party for a coalition. And that, is, that isn't pound positive. That's pound negative. So for me, this pound move, um, not really justified. Yes, a bit of upside, fine. But for it to really continue, Farage has to come out completely and, and unwind. Because as long as he's there, as long as he's taking any votes away from Conservative, regardless of uh, the, the place... Uh, the, the constituency is going, uh, that's going to increase the chance of uh, a potential coalition, increase the chance of uh, a hard Brexit, no deal, i.e. the deal now not getting put through, and, and that is just more uncertainty for, for the pound. So in the meantime, while it's set it is, I don't see the pound pushing higher until polls really start to change. Um, the, the, the Times overnight uh, reporting that uh, the Conservatives are opening up a 14-point lead over Labour on the back of those Farage comments, so fair enough. Uh, but how long that can last, uh, unless he was to withdraw more Brexit Party candidates, I'm not too uh, convinced on that. Looking at the pound on that longer-term chart where we are trading, you know, we in the, in the strategy report on Monday, we're talking about where uh, the the pound could get to on a, on a conservative majority and I think we definitely could get up towards these highs that we had from uh, September uh, uh, 18, March 2019, 135.36. I see that uh, as, a, as a decent opportunity. So much like uh, the stock market, I do see a dip buying opportunity if we were to come lower in the pound. But if Farage is to still uh, go through with, with running for all these seats. I think that is a problem that needs to be taken into consideration before that result does come through. Having a look at the calendar for today, it uh, is a good one. And speaking of the pound, we have some inflation numbers out at 9.30. Uh, the year-on-year -year figure they expect at 1.6, the core 1.7. Uh, so worth keeping an eye on that. Obviously, we know the pound is not going to be moved too much by data. Uh, but remember, the uh, the MPC just last week, a couple of a couple of the, the members there wanting a cut of rates. So worth keeping an eye on this data just to to see in the medium term uh, what they may be thinking ahead of that next meeting. But as said then, as said now, Brexit. And, of course, the general election are going to hold a lot more waiting than a monthly data release. Into the latter part of the morning, we have EU industrial production uh, at 10 a.m. and then U.S. inflation numbers at 1.30. So already shaping up to be a pretty good day um, ahead of us. And with the, the bank holiday we had on Monday, the API uh, inventories are out this evening rather than last night. So, of course, no DOE today that will be tomorrow but we do have the the Powell uh, testimony testimony uh, testifying I should say four o'clock uh, and then a couple of Fed speakers after that as well so on paper looking like a pretty good day uh, the rest of the week how it's shaping up Thursday also you've got some Australian data overnight and Chinese numbers UK retail sales quite a lot of Fed speak the the DOE numbers uh, and then Friday, we've got the US retail sales as well. So the week begins now, I would say. And in summary of, of overnight, last night, Trump speaking was a non-event. Uh, but FOMO has overtaken uh, the, uh, the S&P to drag us higher. So a bit of an unwind last night from that, that the deal could happen soon and it's not happened. Uh, and then tariffs could um, be hiked without an agreement. So gold getting a bit of respite on that S&P coming down a touch 
the currency pairs, the pound and the euro off a bit of dollar strength have been drifting lower, but nothing really more uh, than that. The RBNZ keeping rates on hold, which has led to a push higher uh, for the Kiwi. Uh, the Aussie, you know, following suit in the morning, but that's been pared back quite uh, dramatically uh, already uh, as well. Uh, Brexit update, really it's a case of waiting for those polls and to see what Farage does with these seats. Is he going to run uh, or not? Uh, and of course, looking forward to the data uh, as well. Any questions, uh, please do uh, let me know. Uh, obviously be on the, the mic throughout the day and, and be posting some of the, the technical setups up on the uh, Twitter uh, as well. Catch you all in the chat and hope you have a, a good trading session.